Welcome, Commander Rydek. Wait, you're Jara Rydek? There she is. I don't want you to pull any punches. Certainly not on my account. But once we decide on a course of action, I need everyone to fully commit to the mission. Hold on. Now there's an old face I didn't expect to see again. Hey, Miranda. You'll have to forgive me. I don't know much about Kobliads. But my understanding is you need a steady supply of deridium to keep your cell structure stabilized, or bad things start to happen. Two previously peaceful and otherwise non-aggressive civilizations now find themselves on the brink of all-out war. So it's a peacekeeping mission. I see it as a golden opportunity to not only prove what the Resolute and her crew are truly capable of, but also a mission for which we're uniquely qualified. We've got a massive energy wave inbound, on screen. Uh-oh. Repair crew, this is Acting Captain Jara Rydek. Be advised, you have more micro debris incoming. Find cover. How's that? We're embarking on the first mission since our refit. Let's make it a good one. Oh, that's should be blue. I have to get to sick bay. Go. Commander, help me get her inside. Well, that was quite a scare. A few minutes more and it would have been one of the shortest tenures on record for a first officer. Is that the engineer that was out on the hull? That storm did a real number on him, but he'll live. Just needs rest. You should worry about yourself. Your deridium levels got dangerously low and destabilized your cell structure. This is definitely one of the more memorable first days I can think of. My name is Dr. Aram Duval, Chief Medical Officer. Duval. Be honest, I've never met a Kobliad before. You're rare, I know. I was going to say special. Your people's numbers have dwindled, despite the Federation's efforts to find a more readily available alternative to the deridium you need to survive. Yet you joined Starfleet and managed to thrive. I imagine the responsibility must be overwhelming. <sighs> Maybe even a burden at times. It's both of those things, I guess, but I mean... I know what it means. And I know the responsibility that comes with it. But I can't be anything more than who I am. And if someone has a problem with that, or expects something else, then that's their problem, not mine. That's exactly right. And don't worry, I won't I treat you like crew. a science experiment. I just do the science and leave the experiments to Solano. You don't agree with his methods? I don't agree with his definition of acceptable risks. Not when the lives of your crew are at stake. My professional opinion is that the accident took a toll. More than he's willing to admit. He's overstressed, operating in the pressure cooker of his own mind. Which is never a good headspace when the lives of your crew are at stake. What concerns me is that now he's even further away from the thing he's been chasing his entire career. Breakthrough discovery. The major innovation. Something he can put his name on. But the more the time passes and the further out of reach it gets, the more risk he'll be willing to take. I don't think People so. become blinded by their own ambition. I didn't get that impression of him before. I think after what happened, Captain Solano's learned his lesson. And whatever ambition he once had is on hold for a while. He may say that, but 
You'll see what happens. I have to admit, I was concerned when I heard what happened on the bridge. You just followed Solano's orders despite having better options in front of you. Better? Huh. I guess word travels fast around here. It's a small ship. And everyone's curious about the new XO. Fortunately, your cell structure is almost completely stabilized. And I'll spare us both the lecture, but I do feel it's my responsibility to remind you, without regular infusions of deridium, you will not live. It's as simple as that. Understood. Then, my work here is done. It just follow his orders? Lieutenant Bedrosian. I came to see if you were okay. We were all pretty worried on the um, bridge. No one knew what was happening. That looked worse than it was. I can't even imagine what it must have looked like. I don't want people to get the wrong impression. No, not at all. You don't have to feel embarrassed. Everyone understands this is part of what it means to be Kobliad. You trusted me earlier with the shields, and I appreciated that. I want you to know that I have your back. Thank you. Now, Carter, the emissions that gave you that burn are quite unusual, like everything else that goes with this storm. Ooh. That's a combination of hyronolin and lectrazine to counter the radiation effects. That should help speed your healing. Thank you. She's come by a couple of times to see you already. How long was I been here? It's good to see you awake again. I was starting to get worried. Not that you aren't in good hands with Dr. Duvall. You did take one hell of a shot, though. <laughs> ah, come on, you know you can't get rid of me that easy. Don't push me, Diaz. You do not want to see me try. No, nope. <laughs> I am not getting on your bad side. I am a formidable enemy. <laughs> Millie was looking in on you too, by the way. But since it's just us right now, I... I had a chance to think about this while I was away. And I thought it was important that I just come out and tell you. Instead of tiptoeing around it. Or worse. Why? Leaving it unsaid. You like me or something? I'm gonna say that. No, I've gone. Wait. Are you angry at me or something? Oh, no, no. Not that. I'm sorry. I'm probably making too big of a deal here. What I'm trying to say is... We've been really good friends for a long time. Oh god, she's serious. But I got back here and I couldn't ignore it anymore. I want to see if there's more between us than just being friends. I, uh, uh. This is all kind of unexpected. Yep. I didn't expect this either. But here we are. And I didn't want to ignore it. I just figured I'd steer right into it. Well, what do you think? I've been about as direct ah. as I can stomach. You can do that too. Be direct with me. Sure, what the f Oh, I guess. I like you too, Miranda. Let's see where this goes. Okay. That's... I was really hoping you'd say that. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, the patient needs to rest. If he wants to get back to his old self. Of course. I'll see you again soon. I guess that's a thing now. Huh. So. Jar reaffirmed Captain Solano's trust and confidence in her by demonstrating honesty, integrity, and leadership ability in the aftermath of the crisis at the space dock. Okay, so I mean, good books with Captain Solano. As a Petrosian, admire Jar's instincts to protect the crew when Starbase ordered her to disengage docking clamps. And she thought highly of Jar's efforts to explain the complexity of the situation to Captain Solano, but was disappointed when I followed his orders. I see. Well, yeah, but it sounds like the other plan would have put the 
crew at risk anyway. Westbrook and applauded Jara's efforts to explain the complexity to Captain Solano. Ultimately, he was dismayed when Jara followed Captain Solano's orders. Yeah. Hmm. Commander Up has respected Jara's confidence in following the orders. I see. Dr. Duval understood Jara's loyalty to her captain, but would rather see her thinking independently than following Solano's every order. Well, he's only given one so far. And as for Carter... Edsela was grateful when Carter put her safety ahead of his own on the hull. Yep. Miranda was thrilled to learn Carter's feelings for her tended towards the romantic... and looks forward to seeing where the relationship might go. And as for Chovac... The Chovac found Carter to be respectful and responsible, and he and Edsla were almost late in main engineering. So interesting. I wonder if I'd interacted with anything else, whether I would have been actually late. Approaching the rendezvous point outside Atari Spade. Helm, bring us out of war. Dropping to impulse. Ionic interference surging, Captain. Oh. Shield integrity holding. We can take it. We are at the correct coordinates to meet the shuttle. Commander Rydeck, find us our diplomat, if you will. Aye, Captain. Let's reduce the noise. Filter out environmental signals. I can manually tune what's left for Federation signal types. Okay. I've located meters. the shuttle. Opening comms. On screen. Oh, that's not supposed Shuttle to be doing to that. Shuttle to Resolute. Shuttle to Resolute. Debris field. Lost maneuvering. Impact. Ionic charge. Losing. I can't get it any clearer. It won't Problem. get a transporter lock. It's just not happening. Power up the tractor beam. We'll pull them directly into the docking bay. Diaz. You good to run the tractor emitter? Yes, sir. Uh, you sure? I'm sure. USS Excelsior? Come on, Diaz. That is an older era shuttle as well. First thing, lock onto the shuttle right. and stabilize the rotation. <clears throat> Sorry. Drop to take. Uh, there's the shuttle. And there we go. Looks like there's rocks in the. We, yeah. We're yeah. pulling in debris. Yep. Yeah. I'm on it. Uh, let's get you all over there, please. Thank you. And you, sir. Look at that. What? Oh, that's a big one. That's, that's gonna big... take out the shuttle. Yeah. This the bridge. There's a large piece of debris headed for the shuttle. The tractor beam can't handle it. Can our shields take it? I believe so. <laughs> oh, no. Commander Rydeck, plot an intercept course. <laughs> All right. On it. Oh. Here we go. Maneuvering thrusters bearing 53 Mark 17, 200 meters on an intercept course. Maneuvering. <laughs> wow. Got it. Whoa. Someone's working hard on the bridge. I guess we just drag them back in. That was very quick. Job done. The registry of that shuttle is NCC 2000, so we are talking the Excelsior. The Excelsior, Excelsior, you know. Captain Sulu. We've got the shuttlecraft on board. Good job. We're on our way down to meet them. Okay. Diplomat time. What? Terra firma, so to speak. 
Ambassador Spock. Ah. And others, but whatever. Let's go meet Spock. The <clears throat> captain will be right down to meet you, sir. In that case, I will wait for him here. Okay. I should probably just welcome him aboard as the first person here. Well, let me be the first to say welcome to the Resolute, Ambassador. Thank you, Petty Officer. Carter? Carter Diaz, sir. I am pleased to meet you, Petty Officer Carter Diaz. It appears I have you to thank for my safe arrival. Your assistance arrived not a moment too soon, eh. if I may say so. Has some help from the bridge. Well, it wasn't all me. I got some help from upstairs. Yeah. A bombastic approach to clearing debris. We thought we were prepared for our arrival in Hotari space. All right. But it is evident my craft was not sufficiently robust for such intense ionic activity. Okay, so it was the storm. The storm has been pretty intense. There was an element that was most unusual. Before you came to our aid, our maneuvering thrusters and impulse engines were rendered inoperable. So we attempted a short traversal at warp speed, only to find that we could not achieve warp at all. Even though our diagnostics computer showed no faults or anomalies. What do you make of that? Well, indications say that warp speed is possible, but in practice, Something we find it is not. It is preventing warp, and it's not the ship, so. Well, this storm is one of the strangest phenomena we've ever encountered. It's disrupted other systems. Who knows what it might do to a warp drive? Yes. It would seem further investigation is called for. We'll take readings, run some additional diagnostic checks, and we'll get to the bottom of this. Quite logical, Petty Officer Diaz. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Ambassador Spock. Hey, good. Excuse me. I'm honored to have you aboard. I'd like to get right to it. We're already behind. Uh, there goes the main plot. Ambassador Spock, my senior staff. It's not every day that a captain gets to welcome a Starfleet legend aboard. Hmm. You flatter me, Captain Solano. But legend implies the past tense, <laughs> whereas I am very much focused on our present circumstances. I didn't mean to suggest you were stuck in the past. You're right, Ambassador. Not the most diplomatic choice of words. Uh, let's sort of bail the captain out with number three. Your experience comes from the past. But our present situation calls for it. True enough. We were hoping you could fill us in on the details. We got the basics from Starfleet. Two formerly peaceful neighbors are now on the brink of war. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And the tension between them grows fiercer by the hour. Olydia and Hotari. The Olydians are the more advanced species. They made first contact with the Hotari over a century ago. Okay. This is Tau, the Hotari moon. It is rich in dilithium, and for decades, the Hotari and the Olydians have shared a mining operation there. The Illidians provide the technological resources, while the Hotari have served as the labor force. And a feeling the stability that's how of that arrangement was the source of their peace mm -hmm. until recently. The Hotari have suddenly and forcefully seized control of the mining operations and expelled the Illidians from their system. That is the official story, as told by the Hotari, 
when they requested Federation mediation, but the details remain scant. Communications between all parties have been limited by the ionic interference. Yeah, and what have the Illidians done in this situation? Hmm. Have the Illidians retaliated against the Hotari, or taken any action against them? Surprisingly, they have not yet responded in kind. And they were open to a Federation presence, but it is unlikely the relatively primitive Hotari forces would stand a chance against the Illidian fleet in open war. Left unchecked, this conflict will result in more bloodshed, which is what we are here to prevent. And the dilithium trade hangs in the balance. Clearly, the Hotari have been exploited in this relationship. We don't know that. Maybe we can persuade them peace is the more profitable alternative for everyone. They both profited from the mines. And for the Hotari, something is better than nothing. Peace is our objective, after all. That is correct. <sighs> if we could convince them, it would restore the peace. But we would need the Hotari to accept a difficult compromise. Made all the more difficult by the emotions flaring on both sides, no doubt. Yeah. Either the Illidians or the Hotari are members of the Federation, so we can't make them do anything. There is an additional complicating factor I should mention. In the past, the Federation has relied on the Illidians as a source of dilithium. That certainly changes things. Vested interest. Federation sources its dilithium from a lot of places. Yeah, and this is one of them. Yeah, so we do have a responsibility here. We got involved already. So we've already played a part in this. Yeah. Unfortunately, that is indeed the case, Commander Rydek. We're morally obligated to make this right. Hold on. Our only obligation is to negotiate the peaceful resolution of this conflict. Yeah, same thing. Given the Federation's involvement in the Illidium Dilithium trade, Captain Solano and I must make every effort to appear neutral in these negotiations. Yeah. What worries me is if this whole thing unravels and we're at the mercy of the storm at less than full strength. We can't let it come to that. Considering what the Ion Storm has done to our ship and the Ambassador's shuttle, we have to assume the Illidian fleet has had problems with it as well. This recent surge in the energy disturbance temporarily levels the playing field. Commander Westbrook is correct. The energy anomalies around the Hotari systems have been noted in the past. But they have never been observed on the orders of magnitude we have seen in recent weeks. That may answer why the Hotari were able to strike back after so long. They finally had an opportunity and they took it. That would also explain the Illidians' restraint. And reason to learn as much about the energy anomaly as we can while we are here. We do not want to be caught at a disadvantage of our own. So I trust we understand our circumstances. We're operating on a strict timetable here, and we're going to be leaving for the negotiations shortly. It Commander Westbrook, sense. I want you to leverage our systems to investigate the anomaly from here while we're gone. Oh, they sent a sensor Hi, Captain. Across. Thank you all. Dismissed. I want to speak to both of you privately. Okay, Doug. Ambassador Spock, I'd like to make a formal introduction. My first officer, Commander Jara Rydek. Commander, as you are aware, there are limits to what Captain Solano and I can do in our official capacity as representatives of the Federation. But someone in an unofficial capacity, your first officer, for example, would not be bound by those restrictions. Commander Ryder could ingratiate herself to certain parties behind the scenes, where they may be more candid in revealing information that could lead to a resolution. She certainly goes her own way. Maybe that helps in this case. It would be unconventional, <sighs> but I'm not opposed to it. I'll do it, but yeah. Not exactly... I don't want to muck it up. With all due respect, Ambassador, I'm not a trained diplomat. That's exactly what we're going to leverage. I began my time in Starfleet as a science officer, not as an ambassador. We must be adaptable in the line of duty. 
Well, I hope Commander Rydek will have more luck finding out what really happened than we will through official diplomatic channels. The fate of the negotiations, the interests of the Federation, and the prospect for peace may very well depend on it. No pressure. Okay, yeah, no, easy, easy. Here we are. Not Mr. Look happy. Diaz, I understand you have already discussed the warp drive failure with Ambassador Spock? I have. It is imperative that the Ambassador's shuttle be flight ready. I need you both to ascertain the root cause of the system failures he encountered. I'm surprised, Commander. I thought you would have wanted to work on Ambassador Spock's shuttle yourself. I respect the Ambassador and his many accomplishments. But I do not derive any satisfaction from interacting with his shuttle as if it were somehow transubstantiated <laughs> through its association with him. <laughs> Especially when I have the entirety of this starship to concern myself with. I am not the chief engineer of this shuttle craft. That's fine. The ambassador asked me to take a look, and I'm ready to crack this thing open. Good. You could learn from Mr. Diaz's focus. I'll take notes. <laughs> then I will leave you to it. Make note of any abnormalities in your report. Carry on. It seems like he's warming up to us. Yeah. Even Chobok has to look at that face and know you've earned some real respect. And I have to admit that I owe you one. You were right to make me go first. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm tempting. You did the smart thing. I want to say don't forget it. I'm hoping it's teasing. Yeah, I did pretty great out there. So don't you forget it. I have a feeling you won't let me forget it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna have to do a damn thing to remind you. <laughs> Come on. Let's get to the bottom of this. Alright, diagnostics time. Ready to go? All set. Let's run the diagnostic. Okay. Let's click. I click this. Uh, begin diagnostic. Good shot. <coughs> right. Yes. Begin diagnostic. So, I know about your talk with Miranda. I figured. You, you do? She sent me a priority one dispatch right after your conversation. I'm happy for you, both of you. <sighs> Thanks. But I'm only going to tell you this once. Don't screw this up. Because I would be very unhappy if you tried this out and then, I don't know, six weeks or six days later I have to start splitting holidays between the two of you. All because things went south and you're not on speaking terms. That just isn't going to work for me. I never know. And I know you'll respect that. You really don't believe in me, huh? It's not you. Or her. Just running the numbers, and things don't work out more often than they do. I like my friends, and I like our group. I don't want to lose that. Is that thing done yet? Yeah, yeah it's wrapping up. Let's see. The relays along the primary EPS are blown, but the backup relays are all intact. An EPS overload from the warp drive could cause that. But how did the shuttle end up dead in the water? Huh. Well, maybe the ship's data recorder can tell us something. I see the data recorder button, but I want to see if I push other stuff. I can't, okay. Nope. Alright, what am I looking at here? Oh, timeline of events. Here. They were only about eight minutes from their plotted warp point. No faults, just those warnings. What are they? Error 14720, error 15302, error 9224. Let's go with the lowest number first. Warp field inversion. Warp field became inverted suddenly. I've seen this happen when the center warp coil cracks. A okay. uh, cracked warp coil throws a fault code. Still, we should take a look. Okay, next error. There was a complete warp cascade failure. Wow. 
They're lucky the shuttle didn't turn inside out. Makes me think the computer panicked on the warp field equation. Are we thinking internal actions? Subspace variance out of tolerance. What does that mean? It means the main navigation array lost sight of space somehow. Will the array going offline cause that? Yes, but it should have also thrown a fault code. Any one of these failures should have thrown a fault. If it was caused by a system failure. None of this caused the relays to blow. Roll forward to when that happened. Yes, ma'am. When they reached their... So here, they take a moment to get their bearings and they attempt to re-engage the warp drive. There. That's the relays blowing. Okay. And then they drift. Yep. And look, there's another warp system alert. Same error codes. They're all the same. Subspace variants out of tolerance or warp inversions. Finally, there's a complete warp cascade failure. Then it's one of two things. Either a warp coil is cracked, or the navigation array is offline. That makes sense. Divide and conquer. You want to check the warp coils or the navigation array? I'll check the other. I'll check the coils. Let's not overcomplicate this. One of these systems is likely broken. I'll check the nacelles for a cracked coil. Use your tricorder. Okay. Ooh. I got the entire. Ah, I do have the entire schematic. Hey, person. Alright, coils. Here we go. Oh my god, I can actually look around everywhere. Going around. And this nacelle's blank. Deep scan. During deep scan, you can switch between different scan modes in search of glowing objects. Chemical trail. The, le uh, the leading coils show evidence of routine maintenance. Prepare for micro abrasion. Okay. Nothing untoward there then. Biological signs. I don't think there'd be anything bio. Radiation signs. The rear ones. Let's have a look. A static field in a standby state. Produce a residual electromagnetic field. No deviations. It's fine. They're well maintained. I checked every coil on the port nacelle for imbalances. If any coil in either engine were cracked, I would have detected it. Yeah. So, it must be the navigation array. Except it's not. Checked and double checked. Well, the readings don't lie. Here comes the security detail for the way team. Hey. Hey. I'm not here. <laughs> We're escorting the negotiating team to the surface as soon as they come down from the bridge. I don't want to interrupt some important work. I was just hoping to see you before I go. The captain and the others will be here any minute now. Should be an interesting ride down to the surface. Be nice. Come on, I'm never too busy to make time for you. That's not true. <laughs> no. But I am glad you came by. Now that's more accurate. <laughs> I gotta be precise with you, huh? Hey, Maris. Aren't these those button pushers you're always hanging out with? And you're the phaser jockeys we always beat in Parisi squares, right? All aboard for Hotari! That another one of the captain's railroad things? <laughs> Gotta be. <laughs> I just usually zone out by the time he gets to the whole, uh, steam engines were the warp drives of their day part. Catch y'all later. Man, I hope the captain turns out to be You don't want to miss your train. I do have to go. Not gonna lie, I'd rather not leave right now. More important things on my mind. Be brave. That was nice. 
Yeah, it was. Save some of that for when I get back. You've got a deal. Yeah, I really hope I don't screw this up. Be seeing you. Etzelar de Diaz. Huh? If you could float back down to reality, <laughs> we still have a ways to go. All right, back to the where mystery. were we? Yes. So, the warp coils in the navigation array are fine, but the nav computer doesn't seem to think so. I'm out of ideas short of field stripping the shuttle from bow to stern. I have a feeling we won't find any. You want to take this out of the shuttle and throw it on the bench? Oh, real hands-on maintenance. I like it. Okay, the nav computer is patched into the ship. The ship's computer can double-check our work. If the shuttle's nav computer is putting out false data, we'll know it. Let's run through the shuttle's logs again. Running now. There's the faults. Same. Warp field inversion and the cascade failure. However, the Resolute computer doesn't show the same subspace variance. We're in the same conditions that the shuttle was in when it failed. Why wouldn't the ship's computer get a matching result? What if the subspace variance was a momentary occurrence? That's a possibility, and it would explain why the simulation under our current sensor readings failed to reproduce the issue. But a subspace anomaly strong enough to cause a warp field collapse would leave graviton ripples for days. Let's run with the momentary subspace variance theory for now. Roll forward to the shuttle's attempt to re-engage the warp drive. We need the conditions of space around the shuttle at the moment of warp failure. Resuming simulation. Yeah, so I get where they're coming at. Though it could be some sort of momentary instability in subspace that's caused this warp failure which yeah but like diaz is saying there should be signs of such an instability surely as he says ripples the other alternative is there is something different about the shuttle and that it's well sabotage but let's not go down that route just yet right there's the faults Error in warp field calculation. Cochrane formula variables are out of range. That right there. Take the shuttle sensor data from that moment. Computer, why did the warp field calculation fail? Warp field pressure returned non-orthogonal. Results are undefined. And that doesn't help. Wait, what if we use a different ship? Put the Resolute into the simulation instead of the shuttle. Yeah, it should warp just fine. Unless... Computer, run the simulation with the Resolute. Resolute simulated. Computer, give me manual control on the warp power. Okay. Static field intensity, warp 1.1. Where warp? 1.2. Ah. Uh. Warp pressure is destabilizing. Error in warp field calculation. The warp drive has experienced a system-wide cascade failure. Warp field collapsed. Subspace variance is out of tolerance. Cochrane formula results are undefined. Bingo. what -o? The same moment when the shuttle failed to warp, so did the ship. Whatever happened to the shuttle just happened to us. The Resolute will not sustain warp. Okay. We can't leave Hotari space. I mean, we can, just very, very slowly. Old school style. Ooh. That's a purple ship. I'm assuming the Hotari are being used ambassador Morally. spock captain solano welcome to hotari hello we are honored you have come my name is tylus altaris minister of diplomatic affairs the honor is ours and this is commander jara rydick first officer aboard the uss resolute you'll find she has a keen mind and unique insight into the dynamics between the hotari and the olydians you are 
We are honored to be here as representatives of the Federation. I'm so glad. These you... must be the representatives of the mighty Federation. The reigning authority in the galaxy. Or so we've been led to believe. Whether wow. that's true or not remains to be seen. But either way, we're grateful you've made the time to come to our little corner of the universe. And you are? This is Galvin, and this is Citron, the heroes of the revolt in the mines. Okay, so it was a revolt. Uh, oh. Let's hope this is the last time we ever have to come here. Oh, come on. Be nice. If you'll excuse me. I think we're about to begin. Did you hear the arrogance from that guy? I don't know what we're walking into here. But that guy was something. Yeah. Something about his tone tells me this won't be easy. That was my sense as well. My diary speaks for all of Hotari. So I would urge patience until we speak with their queen. Okay. I'm just gonna do what Spock says, because like is way more experienced at this than uh, everyone else in this room. My queen? Uh, I guess I bow slightly. No deference. Yes. Ambassador Spock, welcome to Holtari Prime. The honor is mine, Your Majesty. That the Federation would send one of their most respected representatives is not only an honor to the Hotari people and their queen, but a recognition of our stature and importance. Let's get on with it, shall we? With all due respect to the Federation and their ambassador, they have no authority here. Correct. We are not members of their alliance. Correct. We are not subject to their rule, nor yours. We demand the immediate return of all mining operations to Elidian control, as it has been for centuries and will be for centuries more. That has always been our understanding. That understanding has changed. Then you invite war! And if you cannot remain silent, you will be silenced. But his point is well taken. What is the Federation's interest in this matter? Perhaps you would have us trade one oppressor for another? The Federation remains neutral. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution of this conflict. We are here at your request, Your Majesty. Yeah. For now. Saying this wouldn't be easy was an understatement. I thought they wanted us here. It is pretty tough. Was there something you wanted to say, Captain? Oh. No. My apologies. And what about the Cobliard? Oh, she recognizes She's not part She can speak for herself, can't she? Then let her. I'm impressed she recognizes the species. Also, I was not expecting this. both sides here but at the end of the day I think the Atari own the rights to their own moon regardless of what a now then what is your name commander Jara Rydek your majesty being a Kobliard you would know better than anyone reliance on other people your people suffered brutal treatment at the hands of the Cardassians their injustice towards the Kobliard is as unimaginable as it is unforgivable not unlike how we have been treated by the Alidians. As much as they'd have you believe they are the victims here, remember it was the Hotari who attacked us. 
Hundreds of innocent Illidians were slaughtered without mercy in those mines. The blood is on their hands, not ours. Quiet! If after all the Kobliad suffered, you finally had the chance to right that wrong, to get out from under their control, would you take it? Or would you negotiate a peace? There is no remedy for what the Kobliad suffered, and I fear who we might have become in pursuit of it. There is no justice if the oppressed become the oppressor. Yeah. Don't go so too I far. would willingly accept a peaceful resolution if it were offered. That is the real opportunity. Perhaps, Commander Rydak. Perhaps. Unfortunately, that was not the case, was it? No, it was not. Peace is often elusive to those who need it most. The Federation is the most powerful, most advanced alliance in the galaxy. It's widely known we have an abundance of dilithium in our minds. And it's in your interest to secure a steady supply. Your Majesty, if I may. Ambassador Spock would have us believe you're here as a neutral party in the interest of peace. So why are you really here? I want the truth, not your Federation rhetoric. I mean, dilithium is a factor. It's possible the Federation has an interest in both peace and securing a steady source of dilithium. One does not preclude or prevent the other. But that's just my personal opinion. Given the Federation has done business with the Elidians for decades, I would agree. It's entirely possible, if not highly likely. What they haven't said, but cannot deny, is a simple truth. The Dilithium trade would not and will no longer exist without Elidian involvement. We created it for the benefit of everyone, especially the Hotari. We've given them warp technology. We've let them share in the profits. We've made their lives infinitely better than before Dilithium was discovered. All of that goes away if the Federation turns a blind eye to their treachery. That is enough of your lies! The Hotari are quite capable of running the mines. We've done so for centuries. So tell me, who deserves control of the dilithium trade and the mines on town? Are you asking me? Who should the Federation recognize? The Hotari or the Alidians? Are you only going to give me like... Yep, you're only going to give me like two choices. Can only be one or the other, not both. <sighs> I'm gonna have to go with the Hatari because in my gut that's if what I feel. If I have to choose only one, then it would have to be the Hotari. Well said. How could the just and wise Federation make any other choice? <gasps> this is an outrage. The Federation has lost all credibility. The mines are ours. Lydia will not be deterred. We will take the back our mines starts. by any means necessary. Then you will see more blood spilled. Oh dear. I am more than willing to address your concerns, Your Majesty. Yours as well, Representative. But I suggest we could have a more productive conversation with a smaller group. Perhaps only the most essential representatives. Yep. It does not include me. I suppose there is some sense to that. I hope we meet again, Jara Ryder. Oh, well.
well. Yeah, I know, I know. Spock and I will cover everything on the diplomatic front. You make nice with the locals and see if you can get some answers. All right. We need to find out why the Hotari are so willing to risk war. What happened in those mines? I think I'm going to go speak with the Elidians first. That's a cool disruptor. I'm assuming it's a disruptor. Usually the disruptors examine. The captain and ambassador have it handled. Very well. I've got my own mission. So here's the thing. I was assuming that the Hutari were being sort of oppressed, but didn't know that for sure. Now, being here, it seems like that is incredibly the case. There has been a revolt. Such rough terrain. No wonder the Hotari are so tough. I'm probably not telling you anything you don't already know, but these negotiations rely on the Federation's neutrality, as does any hope you might have for a supply of dilithium in the future. So why you would choose to side with the Hotari escapes me. Without a Lydian involvement, there is no dilithium ah. trade. But clearly, you weren't aware. Of all my concerns, dilithium is not one of them. I could care less about securing a supply, now or in the future. I'd be curious to know if the rest of the Federation shares your indifference. Probably not, but you were asking me. Or at least I was when I was in that A boat. Major Sarlit Arminta, Special Attaché, Elidian Armed Forces. Pleasure to meet you, Commander. I have my issues with the Hotari, but I have to give them some credit. They know how to seize an opportunity. Inciting an uprising the same day as a massive once-in-a-lifetime ion storm. Our assumption was that this storm was just an anomaly. Yes, a very convenient anomaly. I mean, I'd at be least lying. that was what we were told. If I said I hadn't thought of that. Too. Of course, I wasn't there. But who am I to say otherwise? You do sound sceptical. Let's try to ingratiate ourselves. You should know better than to believe everything you're told. Well, the official story is that it was the storm that enabled the revolt. How else do a bunch of unarmed, unorganized miners seize control of an entire moon, much less thousands of mines? Mm -hmm. But I've talked to people who were there. They tell a different story. They say they're lucky to have escaped with their lives. That it was more than just the storm. That somehow the miners were able to harness the energy from the storm. I know it sounds crazy. I'm not even sure I believe it myself. But that's what they said. I won't say it's impossible. We don't have all the facts, but... Hmm. You said the Hotari were primitive. Well, they are. Except for the part about weaponizing ion storms. Interesting. If you'll excuse me, Commander Ryder. Of course, sorry. Quite an amiable person, really. Commander Rydeck, I'm encouraged to see the Federation supporting my people. I'm afraid of what might happen without your help. Uh... If anyone deserves thanks, it's Ambassador Spock. No one is more invested in negotiating a peaceful settlement to this conflict than he is. I'm so glad. We need his help before the situation escalates further than it already has. It's been... very trying. Imagine. I saw you speaking with the Elidian. I'm sure they're painting themselves as the victims. The Elidians are under the impression much. the Hotari are somehow the cause of the Ion Storm. Which I'm sure they attribute to our lack of experience or sheer inferiority. But we are as much the victims of this horrific storm as they are. For the first time in our history, the Hotari have the upper hand. We see ourselves as strong instead of downtrodden. New voices have risen up. Old voices shouted down. Galvin and Sidron have become national heroes. 
Now they have the queen's ear. Better or worse, depending on your perspective. Are they against peace? I take it they're against a negotiated peace with the Illidians. Heroes tend to want more of what made them heroic. If it were up to them, they'd wage all-out war. Rich Hitler's. bring ruin upon us all. Yeah, once the storm passes. My fear has been that the Illidians will launch an attack and crush us. You've seen their starship, no doubt. They could have retaken the mines whenever they wanted to. But it never happened. And as strange as this may sound, I'd almost say they're afraid. I just don't know what they're afraid of. It's still the same bluster and bravado you would expect from them. But it has no teeth. Like they're afraid of what might happen. I reckon it's the storm. They're not afraid of us. They're not afraid of the insurgency. Do you think it has something to do with the Ion Storm? Right now, it's stronger than ever, isn't it? It's entirely possible. I'm not a scientist, but I do know the storm has knocked out all kinds of systems. So maybe the Illidians weren't willing to risk their ships, given all the interference. Since the day of the revolt, Galvin has seized control of the mines and restricted all access. No one's allowed without his personal authorization. And they've taken over a section of the palace with just as much secrecy and security. Oh? I'm told it could be something they brought back from the mines. They've made inquiries, but everyone pretends it doesn't exist. I strongly suspect they're hiding something. They are. I don't think you know what it is, so I'm gonna ask why. Why would they do that? I don't know. But that's what concerns me. Whatever they're hiding, it can't be good. Yeah. How can we know? I'd better see what's happening. Do you think you can find out what they're hiding? I need to see proof of something before I can make my case to the Federation. I can try, but even if I found it, I might not know what to make of it. Take this. You can use it to capture whatever you find, and then send it to me. Thank you. I will let you know what I find. And I look forward to our meeting again. Yeah, hopefully you can, you know, understand Federation tech in, like, less than an hour. Commander Ryder, I need a moment of your time. Sure. I'm glad you've chosen to side with the Hotari. I knew the Federation would see through the Illidians' baseless claims and protect the interests of my people. Well, yeah, and the Illidians aren't going to go anywhere, so you're going to have to deal with them eventually. Even though the Hotari should have control of the mines, some of the Illidian claims are still valid. There you're wrong, but we can agree to disagree. That's fine. I assume you were there, the day the mines were seized from the Illidians. Not seized. Reclaimed. And restored to their rightful owners. Yes, I was there. We had to be decisive. Before the Illidians could even realize their worst nightmare was upon them. Do you fear retaliation? I'm curious why the Illidians haven't fought back. They have the ability to retake the mines any time they want. Ability is one thing. Courage is another. The Illidians know any hostile action on their part will not end well. They respect one thing above all else, and that is force. The greater the force, the more certain the outcome. Right. Any talk of making peace is just that and worth little without the strength to secure it. Which makes me wonder about your ship, the Resolute. Undoubtedly the Federation's finest warship. <laughs> um, Ready to contend with anything the Illidians might have in store. I mean, store. yes, totally. The Resolute. Or is that not true? Maybe I've misjudged it. The fleet is always within reach. Yes, that's a better... No need to worry. 
Even in a worst-case scenario, the fleet is always within reach. But it would probably take them quite some time to get here. Maybe. Or we might have other ships in the sector. Of course. Sidron. A pleasure meeting you, Commander. I'm sure we'll cross paths again. I'm beginning to see the point of a uh, science retrofit of a Centaur class. That was a strained conversation. Appreciate the water, yes. I'm just going to appreciate this for a minute. Hmm. Soothing. There we go. Report my findings to Captain Solano. Captain, the water is mighty soothing. <laughs> 